Hello Planet Internet, I am Emperor Cole and this is Emperor Cole Film Review brought to you by MindbenderENT.com and today we're doing something a little special. I'm going to be reviewing episode one of The Defenders on Netflix. Throughout this series I'm going to review each episode really quick. There will be some spoilers in this review. If you haven't seen the episode yet, definitely go check it out for that hour. Then come back and check this out. But let's get into it. The Defenders, episode one. Out, we all have a general idea we know who the defenders are the defenders are basically the local version of the Avengers we've got the Iron Fist Danny Rand we've got Jessica Jones we got the hero of Harlem Luke Cage and of course we have the devil of Hell's Kitchen Daredevil so right from the beginning the way the episode opens up we have all the heroes out on their own doing their own thing everybody of course is in their own particular daily lives We've got Jessica Jones who gets approached by a woman whose husband is missing. She hasn't seen him for a week. And Jessica Jones, of course, she doesn't really want to take the case, but she decides to take it because she feels bad for the woman. And of course, we know that this is going to lead to a much bigger conspiracy down the line. So as she's putting the pieces together and trying to figure out where exactly this guy is, initially she thinks that maybe he's just screwing some intern or something, or maybe he's out on a bender, he went out of town or something of that nature. But of course, when she tries to figure out what he does for work, and she starts to follow some clues, it leads to something that seems a lot more sinister. Cage is fresh out the bing. It's not 100% clear how long he's been locked up for, but it must not have been too long. But of course, when he touches down in the streets of Harlem, the first thing he does is meets up with Claire. We find out Claire's been writing him and keeping in contact with him. So they got their, their whole love things popping off. Of course, as soon as they get back to her crib, Luke is straight up in them skins, as you would expect. If you just got home from prison, you got a fine young lady who's been keeping in contact with you, who wants to be your girl, she's still down with you, you already know, ooh baby, I like it raw. We know how that's going down. Originally, wasn't Luke Cage serving a, I believe, for a murder, for killing somebody? That's what they thought he killed someone, so they never show how all that got cleared up, or at least in episode one, they don't show that. And that's just something that gets a little bit murky, but... Of course, it's a TV show. You just go with it. Our villain that we get in this, as you saw from the trailer, is going to be Sigoni Weaver playing the role of this woman, Alexandra. She gets news from her doctor that apparently she has some kind of a disease or maybe some type of a cancer. It's something that's spreading rapidly and it doesn't look like they can do a whole lot for her. But it's got something to do with her blood. They said her red blood cell count had dropped. So it looks like she's not going to be around for too much longer. So this puts her in a position where whatever plans she planned on doing, she has to accelerate them and has to get to work much faster. So now we see her interacting with Madame Gao, and she's kind of, it kind of looks like she's the bad guy above Madame Gao, which is a little strange because we always thought Madame Gao was supposed to be the end all be all. So I like the way Netflix and Marvel have females portrayed as the villains, not necessarily just a guy. One problem that I kind of see with that right off the top is Sigoni Weaver herself has to be in her 60s. And it's like, okay, she's supposed to be this big bad villain, but I don't expect her to be doing any fight scenes. She's not going to be getting physical with people very much. I don't see Sigourney Weaver jumping around, ninja kicking anybody, pulling out swords, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, or Daredevil. So, of course, they're going to have to introduce some another main character who's going to have to be a villain. But another thing that seems a little weird to me as well is the hand is figured out for people to not die and to keep coming back to life. And I believe the woman Alexandra does say something about dying and coming back before or something about she's lived many lifetimes. She says something to that effect. So it is a little weird that she's worried about dying, yet she's connected to these people who figured out how to cheat death and how to keep coming back to life. One thing that I found to be definitely surprising is the fact that Matt Murdock no longer is the daredevil. He's just working this job doing pro bono cases as a lawyer so I thought that it was very unique that instead of actually still being the daredevil he's just kind of giving it up so that was something that I really didn't see coming it was a nice curveball I like the fact that it's not business as usual for him he's dealing with the real emotions he's dealing with the real effects of the things that happened at the end of daredevil season two is when Madame Gao is speaking with Sigoni Weaver's character Alexandra and they're sitting on like the rooftop kind of like balcony area and Madame Gao is actually kind of trying to talk her out of doing whatever she plans on doing. She's saying to her, are you certain about this? There's time to rethink this. And she just tells her to go. It's like they're kind of showing that Sigoni Weaver's character, Alexandra, is in a position where it seems like she's above Madame Gao. Like, she's even more of a threat. She's more dangerous. So. Overall, episode one of Defenders, truthfully, is very slow. I mean, there are some things that happens, but it's not a whole lot of action going on. 
Overall, if you did not watch all the individual series, you won't know a whole lot about these characters and what's going on with them. So this episode is kind of like a where are they now, just a refresher to get everybody caught up to where the superheroes are in their life as far as what's going on in this world. So you definitely need to have watched the other series before this one. And like I said, it is a slow episode, so you kind of have to take your time with it. A couple times I had to rewind the episode because I found myself scrolling through my Facebook timeline or looking at emails, checking to see if anybody got back to me on certain things. Then I found myself checking certain websites, and I'm like, man, I need to go back and rewind this episode and pay, pay attention. So I had that problem two separate times, so I figured you might too if you have other distractions around. All right, so I am Emperor Cole, and this was my quick review of The Defenders Episode 1 on Netflix. If you enjoyed this review, please make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. If you've already saw episode one, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you liked about episode one or what you did not like. Definitely make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Miami Entertainment. Follow us on Twitter at MindbenderENT. And of course, check out the website, MindbenderENT.com. And remember, the future is now.